All right, here we go. Uh, friendly reminder, tomorrow you have index card. Uh, Monday you have index cards and quiz on 11 through 20. Wednesday, Tuesday you have outline due 21 through 27, because yeah. it's not 30 words. And then Wednesday you do have a test, focus, and study guide. So please make sure you know exactly what to do, and then we'll go. So, here we go. Yesterday, we talked about mental retardation, developmentally delayed. We talked about the impact of them. Hopefully, you left yesterday feeling like people, uh, parents of uh, people who are mentally delayed, developmentally delayed, um, are the real heroes of our society. Can we agree? Imagine dealing with that every single day, watching people you love suffer and have a hard time expressing themselves. There are moments of glory as well, uh, but please keep in mind, they are the best parents in the world. I mean, your parents are pretty great, but imagine how hard it would be on top of trying to be a good parent. So, giftedness is where we left off yesterday, right? We got to language. Uh, we talked about Terman. We talked about how your IQ is the mixture of both your mom and your dad's DNA, correct? Like the last thing perfect so this is where we'll start so oh thank you Tessa uh, thank you Nicola so when we talk about DNA 50% of your intelligence comes from your mom 50% of your intelligence comes from your dad and it's like a mixture so we'll see what happens on the meat in the, how it comes out with that being said it's also a nurture argument <coughs> every single person knows someone who is incredibly incredibly smart who does nothing and they're literally wasting their intelligence, correct? It's just sitting there rotting, okay? That kid isn't going to get as far in life as, say, someone who doesn't have as low, who has a lower IQ, but who grinds it out every single day, correct? I've had a lot of students who weren't the smartest kids I've ever seen, but are going to amazing universities because they will sit there and they will make themselves learn something, and that's the work ethic of the nature nurture. So if your parents are dumb, it means you're genetically probably on the lower end, correct? But that doesn't mean you're stuck there. You can have the work ethic to climb yourself out, stuff like that. Same thing on the higher end. Just because both of your parents are not in crazy intelligent doesn't mean that you will be as well either. So keep that in mind. All right, language. This is on the back of your study guide, by the way. Don't worry, we'll be filling in a ton of your focus today. So language is a system for combining symbols such as words so that unlimited number of meaningful com uh, statements can be made for the purpose of communicating with others. Is anyone here bilingual? What do you speak, Mandarin? Um, speak Cantonese. Cantonese. Very cool. Can you say something for us? Or does that make you mad? Makes you mad? All right. What do you, who else? What do you speak, Davi? Cambodian. Cambodian, yes. Can you say something for us? Nah, damn it. Cambodian. Anyone else? Okay, so by the way, statistically, and uh, with plenty of evidence, bilingual speakers are more intelligent than people who only speak one language. So Davi, do you dream in Cambodian or you dream in English? Do you speak English, uh, do you speak English at home or Cambodian at home? Both? Okay, well, majority, what would you say? Wait, wait, what? My dad's What the hell? I've never heard that. What the hell is that? Oh, what, is, what are they called? I've never heard that. Laos. Yes, I know Laos. I, they're called Laotians? That is really cool. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh, wow, so you got like a whole lot of things going on in there. And then you speak English back to them, or? Yeah, but I understand that. Well, I have to speak Cambodian and Laos to my grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much going on in that head of yours. So, with just, just trying to follow her explanation of who she's speaking what language to, you can tell that her neural connections are way faster and more hardwired than ours are, our monolingular people like myself. I struggle with English, so there's no way I'm learning a different one. So with that being said, Davi's brain thinks faster than us mono, uh, 
lingual people because she has to think faster. So do you translate everything into English? So your mom's speaking Cambodian to you. Do you translate to English and then process it? Or do you just translate, do you just process it in Cambodian? So I have a kid who in last period, or in um, one of my early classes, who speaks fluent Spanish. And so he translates everything into English to think about it, process it, and then spits it out in, a, in his head English, spits it out Spanish. So it's like going in Spanish, processing it, turning it into English to understand it, processing it, and then spits it out English. I was like, oh my God, that's a whole lot. And he's like, yeah, it kind of is. Because he's more comfortable in English, so he thinks in English, but can speak fluent Spanish, so he has to translate it. So, language is a really powerful thing. Do you think in Cantonese, or do you think in English? Do you dream in English or Cantonese? I dream in English, but if it's like, I'm spending a lot of time with like an environment where it's just Chinese, like, start dreaming. That is so cool. What do you think in... Like, there, like, when, like... Because, I, like, at home, my mom, she talks Spanish, and my great-grandma has been at my house for, like, some time. So... By the way, this is grammar, and you could be writing it I down. I understand, I, I can understand it's on both it, sheets. speak it, like, write it, all that, but... Like well, some people Spanish. literally hear the Spanish, translate it to English, then think about it, then say it in Spanish. Instead of like hearing it in Spanish, thinking about it in Spanish, and responding in Spanish, they translate it to English. So if I say "Hola, cómo estás," literally I just know the what cat. You say, but I yeah, so you in see, English. you hear in Spanish, you respond in English. Why? Just people the people who process, process languages differently. <laughs> people process Ameri like English differently, too. All right, so grammar is the system of rules governing the structure and use of language. The best way to think about grammar is going to be, and this should be your application, is punctuation, capitalization. So give me a grammar rule, Adrian. Commas. <laughs> that would be an example of punctuation, but what's a grammar rule with commas? Perfect. You put a comma between it. Lucas. There you go. Give me another one, Zoe. Okay, that's uh. It's fake it works on like no words. Like words Don't be such a hater. It's a cute little rhyme, and we all learned it. Um, spelling is gonna fall under syntax, actually. So. I don't know. English? <laughs> Sydney, what do you got? Oh, um, you capitalize the first letter of a sentence. You capitalize uh, formal nouns, stuff like that. All right. Syntax is a system of rules for combining words and phrases to form grammatically correct sentences. When we talk about syntax, we're talking about uh, what would be an example of syntax? When you are f uh, combining rules, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, I know, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not my thing. Yeah, this is not my thing. Okay, no, stop it, that hurts. <laughs> yes, this is making sure that you have your uh, nouns followed by your adjectives, correct? The girl is pretty, okay, the boy is strong, whatever. Um, it's just the format of your sentence, so that would be a good example. Another example of syntax would be what? Uh, making sure all your tenses agree. Okay, if you're talking in the past in the first part of the sentence, you got to make sure you're keeping it through all the way through the sentence, correct? Okay, if you're talking in plurals, 
Okay, if the girls are going, then you have to make sure you are going to get a drink. No, it'd be going to get a uh, going to get drinks. It's plural drinks, plural girls. I'm done with this. <laughs> no, it's not. It's annoying. Is Cantonese easier? Because it looks terrifying. Cantonese is not a written language. We we still write the same way as like normal Mandarin Chinese. So like. So it's just like a dialect. Though, like you just add a word if it's done. You add a word, or you like it's different words, but you add another character if it's like. Are you? Can you write in Mandarin? Are you? Would you say you're as fluent in Mandarin? No. I'm like, I wouldn't think you would have... Convers- I'm like maybe like averagely conversational in Mandarin. Can you write though? Yeah. Would you say like you're competitive in her writing? Um, See, this just blows my mind away because I just, sh- like, other than English, no. Like, yeah, no way. write decently well. That's crazy. Spanish too? Uh, Spanish too. <laughs> All right, morphemes are the smallest unit of meaning within a language. Okay, who can give me an example of a morpheme? Huh? No, whispering is not a morpheme. No, don't give me A and I's, no. No. Are you talking about root words? No. Yeah. I-N-G, yes! That would be one, but why? What does that imply? It's happening now. That's what ing. You're running. You're jogging. You're doing it now, da- uh, Daniel. Could be like ed for past tense. Yes. So biology is made up of two morphemes. What are the two morphemes in the word biology? Who can raise your hand and tell me the two morphemes in biology? Bio. Jillian, what are they? Bio. What does bio mean? Bio. No, bio doesn't mean the study of something. Bio means. Oh, like that. Living things, and ology means, there you go, study of life. Okay, biology. Okay, same thing with psychology. Psych is a morpheme. It means the brain or the mind. So, psychology is the study of the? Those are morphemes. So, you got zoology, geology, theology, sociology. All of those are two morphemes combined to make a word. Re, ab, in... On ED, which is what Daniel mentioned, when I have DI, it means what's happening. Two things are happening. When I have tri, it means three. three. When I have mono, it means those are all your morphemes. Morphemes meaning smallest meaning. So morphemes like prefixes and sentences. Yes, but not always in that context either. All right, so then you have semantics, which you need to write at the bottom of your study guide. You got room. So semantics are the rules for determining the meaning of words and sentences. So when we talk about semantics, we all know that there are multiple words you could choose when you decide to say something or write something, correct? Like when you describe the earth, you can say earth or you can say, huh? The world, absolutely. When is one appropriate and the other inappropriate? That's semantics. What would be another example? What would be another example of semantics? When you could use two, you have a choice of different words. Thanks and thank you. Thanks and thank you. Okay. <laughs> Appreciation or thanks. I think that would be a little better. Daniel? Like reading. No. No. You're reading. You read. No. Sorry, Daniel. What? It's like, hello or good day. <laughs> good day. Good day. Good day. Like, uh, is that right? Actually, yeah? Like, that's not bad. That's weird. That's weird. You say good day? I don't know why, but yeah. Like, they like, bye. <laughs> uh, salutations or greetings. Greetings is my personal fave, as you've noticed. I assume. Like, All the time. That's how she starts her parents out. I too. Greetings. Yes or greeting baby sex. What? Yes or y'all. Yes. Um, you guys and y'all. Y'all. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay. So, but all of those are appropriate in certain situations. Some of those situations are interchangeable, but some are more appropriate than not. So saying yes is appropriate for an authority figure to be speaking to their class. 
But I personally choose. Yeah! <laughs> because it makes me happy, and I think it's funny. All right, we good on semantics? Yep. All right, so. <laughs> oh, I hate you all. All right. Phonemes! Phonemes are the basic units of sound in a language. Phonemes. When you pick up a phone, you hear sounds. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell do you hear on your phone? Why? <laughs> What? This is so strange. I know, strange. Wait, wait, wait. You like, you know when you like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got like a hotel or something. And they have like the one that press the numbers. You know, it's like touch tone? Yeah. That's whatever. Okay, so phonemes. When you pick up a phone, you hear sound. That's a good way to remember it. Morphemes, meaning, M, M. Okay, because people get them confused. We talk about. Morphemes. We're talking about the smallest unit of sound. So, what would be a morpheme? Who can raise your hand and tell me a morpheme? Daniel. A syllable. Give me an example. Ah. Yes! It's perfect! Ah. B. Z. T. Ch. It's all the sounds of your letters. So, for your application, I would write sound of S. Sound of B. If we write syllables, or. Syllable. Pragmatics. An aspect of language involving the practical ways of communicating with others and social nicety. So these are the things, the rules we follow in order to be appropriate members of society. So what are some rules that we follow when we're speaking? Hello? We, we don't follow any rules when we're speaking? What do you got, Julian? Looking at the person. Yes! That's a good one. I haven't heard that all day. Yes! Okay, speaking. To uh, looking at the person you're speaking to. What would be another one? Caitlin, what's the social nicety we do? Okay, you don't talk too I hate those people. And you know who else I hate? I hate the people who walk around on their FaceTimes. That crap pisses me off. It is so rude. When you're, okay, for instance, I was at Home Goods last Friday, and I'm just walking around minding my own business, and some lady was, like, literally doing the same route I was through Home Goods, literally chatting to someone on FaceTime. That's so annoying. Why do I want to hear your conversation? Oh, well, if it's loud, I get that. But if you're, like, because sometimes when I'm at Target, I FaceTime my mom to see what she wants. Why can't you just call her? Because she doesn't even know what I'm doing. When, when you FaceTime, then you can, like, turn the camera around and be like, so... Like, she always oh, FaceTime me. I, I, it's a generational thing. I just can't. I just can't. I, I, I so, wait, if it's a generational thing, it's a generational thing. So waste data by filming something? Exactly. I don't know. Maybe you're just. It's easier. My dad, <laughs> my dad FaceTimes me from the grocery store all the time. Yeah, you I should FaceTime the grocery No, that's so weird. Mm -hmm. You literally have to walk him through, like, what he's doing. So that's why we're FaceTiming. <laughs> 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 why don't you just go yeah. yourself? <laughs> don't let go outside. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like going outside? <laughs> Girl, we gotta get you out of that. Oh my god. Crystal. Be pragmatic. You should have given her a piece of dreaming. A piece of dreaming. No, in a different language. No. I'm making a speech at the time, and I'm like, I'm doing this thing. All right. So, so uh, pragmatics are right, saying please and thank you. Sir, Miss, Madam came up earlier. I don't know how many times you people use Madam Madam. 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 Oh, yeah. Madame. 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 Madame.
There we go. By the way, this is on your focus and on your study guide. So, uh, way to way to cross out things off here, people. All right, so uh, for language and cognition, if you look on the bottom of your focus, I'm going to fill in the box. The first one is major figures. Don't fill that in. Go to the findings box, but we're going to stop. I want to explain it to you, and it'll make more sense when you write it down. We got it. <coughs> so let me talk about the linguistic relativity theory. It's actually one of my favorite theories of the whole year. And the reason why it's one of my favorites is because I really agree with it. I really like it. Some of them I tell you I think are crap. Some of them are fine, and some I really, really like. So this one just happens to really like. So the linguistic relativity theory believes that your intelligence dictates your thoughts. So if you have a large vocabulary, you are able to have larger thoughts. The smaller your vocabulary, the smaller your thoughts. So, case in point, uh, when you talk about uh, your feeling towards Donald Trump, whatever your emotions are, I generally don't care. Okay? If you really like Donald Trump and you have a big vocabulary, you can really express in good reason why you think Donald Trump is doing a great job. Correct? If you really hate Donald Trump, you can use that vocabulary and explain in multiple ways why you hate Donald Trump, correct? And have a very complicated article. On the other side, argument. On the other side of it, if you really like Donald Trump and you don't have many things to say, like you don't have a lot of words that you're used, you're going to say, he's a great guy. You know, he's got the best brain. I think that's the greatest quote in the history of time. I have the best brain. Like, whether you like him or not, it doesn't matter. It's a funny quote. No one ever talks about, like, your brain. Like, when you say the words brain, you're talking about, like, the physical brain. Like, that's amazing. I, I don't care who you are. That's funny. Okay? So, if you like Donald Trump and you have a very small vocabulary, you can say, ah, oh, he's a great guy. He's great. You know, he's doing a great job. Yeah, boo. Limited. If you hate Donald Trump, what are you probably just going to do the whole damn time? Curse. Right? Because you hate him, you know, all you can really say is, well, he's this, and he's this, and using a lot of four-letter words, yes? Small vocabulary, okay? That's one example. Another example is, if you have a very small vocabulary and you try to describe colors, you really won't be able to say much, right? Red, green, blue, orange, yellow, correct? But hopefully by now, you have a much larger vocabulary of colors, so you can start using words like magenta, Mauve, amber. What else would be another funky color? Burgundy. Mahogany, burgundy, mac and cheese. What? It's one of my favorite ones to talk about. I use it all the time. <laughs> it's in the Crayola box, man. It's a color. Okay? So that's what linguistic relativity theory is. The more words that you have in your head, the more complex your thoughts are. Isn't that cool? So essentially, people who have very low IQs and people who have very little vocab in their heads actually cannot have sophisticated arguments and can't have big thoughts. What are your thoughts? I agree. I think so. I mean, why do you agree, Lucas? Because I've talked to people, and like, I don't want to be rude, but I've talked to people that don't like, that aren't like that um, educated. Yeah. And it's not like they're making dumb statements, it's just that they're, they don't really like, get a lot across. No, they just can't literally articulate what they're trying to say. And it's like, so you don't like Donald Trump. Why? Well, he's a jerk. Okay, can you give specifics? Well, he, he's, he's mean. Cool. You have nothing else to say. And it obviously goes back and forth on both sides. Crystal. Isn't it like a, like a legitimate thing where people, where the newspapers write at like a fourth grade level? Sixth grade, I think it is. I don't know. I think this year we've learned a lot more words, especially uh, legal terms like collusion. Big word. Big word. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're writing at a lower level so they can catch all aspects of the uh, population. But you, in your editorials, you see they jump up significantly, don't they? If you've ever read a newspaper, it's pretty low level going through the articles. But when you read the editors... Uh, opinions or the editor's notes and all that stuff, it's like super highbrow. Like there's some crazy words in there. 
Sometimes it depends, okay? So the more words you have at your disposal, think about how, mo how much more complicated your emotions are now than they were maybe three or four years ago. Now that you can understand more of the world and going on, you have more words at your disposal. Hopefully your arguments have improved with your parents. You're not saying, because I want to, right? You're arguing why you should be able to do something and stuff like that. Good discussion, guys. This is going real well. Yes. Well, I don't know. No. <laughs> I can't. I'm not sure if it's Chomsky or not, so I'm just going with it. Uh, so I'm not telling you because I don't know off the top, but it is in your book, so feel free to look. So you do have cognitive universalism, which is the next box below, and it's the opposite. It believes that everyone has the same universal concepts in their head, and that that influences the development of language. That your experiences and the words that you're taught and surrounded by shape your opinions and actual thoughts. So, like, for instance, talking about healthcare, for instance. I think everyone in the room would agree that healthcare is really important, correct? Whatever political leaning you are, Everyone can agree that healthcare is a goal of yours in your future. Okay, no one probably wrote that down on your wish list. Like, oh, I need healthcare. But in your head, you understand that you need to have a good job so you can have healthcare, correct? Okay, so depending on how your parents talk about healthcare and what type of uh, news you hear about healthcare is going to shape whether you think the government should control it and make it a universal right for all Americans to have healthcare. Or is it a private business responsibility and no one's entitled to it, they should earn it? Does that make sense? So those are your two <laughs> opinions. Depending on the, everyone has the concept of healthcare in their head that it's important and your, the words you hear about it is going to shape your opinion. So the words you're exposed to from essentially what would be your family is going to shape your thoughts on it. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that cool? So, like, I come from a very conservative household. My dad, my whole family voted for Trump. My whole family did. I did not, but my whole family did. And my dad is super, super conservative. I used to be a very staunch Republican during, uh, I made a Bush t-shirt during uh, W's election. Okay? Now I'm not, I'm still a registered Republican. If I pull out my voting card, I have a Republican on there. I'm not changing it anytime soon because I do believe in a lot of Republican things. Like, I am very conservative on my own money. I think cons conservative uh, financial things are good. However, I've become way more left in my social concerns. From my experiences, my exposure in public education has made me move left on a lot of social things. So now, when I vote, I sometimes vote Republican, and I sometimes vote Democrat. It depends on the person. So with that being said, cognitive universalism comes from, in growing up, I always heard from my dad, who's very Republican, 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 and that has shaped my thoughts, and then my own experiences has shaped my thoughts again, and then here are my own individual opinions. Yes, no? Do we like this or no? Which one do you like better? You think? I like linguistics. I like linguistics. It makes more, uh, I think universalism makes more sense. Yeah. Because, because if, if everyone was brought up the same way, it, it would be much more likely that they all have the same kind of process and use of language. Yeah. It just applies to me. Like I don't think it's necessarily... Well, they're theories, so they're not laws, which means neither of them can be proved correct, which is why they're theories. But you don't think more words get in your head, give you the ability to have uh, more uh, deeper thoughts? I mean, think about the ways, like, you, hopefully you figured out that you love people in different ways, correct? Like, as your relationships grow and change, you're going to have different ways that you love people in your life. Like, I love my little sister because she teaches me to uh, appreciate and take my, don't take myself for granted and be kinder to myself. Okay? But she drives me insane. My brother teaches me, and I love him for this, that I love him solely for the fact, because he drives me absolutely up the walls. They both put their Christmas trees up. 
It's a steadfast rule here, people. I don't really care, but it was the thing I found this morning. I'm sorry. My brother teaches me I am who I am because my brother is exactly who he is. Every day of every moment, it makes me want to punch myself in the face because it drives me crazy. But you love people for certain things, and your parents, your relationship with your parents is going to change throughout as well, correct? Right now, they're they're your providers and caregivers, correct? They're paying for the roof over your heads. Eventually, that's going to change, and your love for them is going to change. Hopefully deeper, because you see how much they sacrificed for you, how much they did for you, whether you appreciate it now or not. Later, when you look back in hindsight, you're like, damn, my soccer team costs so much money. Why would they do? Why would they pay that much money? They should just give it to me now. Ten grand would be great. Oh my god, it was crazy. I don't know why they love me that much. I guess so. It's just kind of like you see things in different ways, and experience gives it to you. So linguistic is all about experience. Cognitive is all about shaping and the molding of thoughts and ideas. Thanks, cool. Animal language is your next one. We're crushing it, aren't we? is good. So studies have found that animals can do basic language and some abstract ideas. Does anyone know what abstract idea they ask animals about? No one has any idea. This is a great class. Thank you so much for participating. What is the abstract idea they ask animals about? No, they don't ask animals the meaning of life. <laughs> love. They ask animals who they love. Love is abstract. People, all people describe it differently. Like, do you think love is, like, sexual chemistry? Do you think it's admiration? Do you think it's providing for you? Uh, do you think it's that constant support? Do you, is it the comfort which makes you love someone? All those things. It's a very abstract thing. Like, what, what color is your love? That's an 80s song. <laughs> yeah, it's a reference. Never mind. This is going really well today really well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone's going to think you guys are the most lame class in the history of classes. It's fine. I'm fine. I know. And we are what? Less than two. Ah! An hour away. And then I go to work. I know. It's so exciting. Going home. I go to work. Okay, so, uh, so the reason why animals actually are, the limitation of animals is they don't have syntax, which means what? If you don't have syntax, you don't have what? Who can raise your hand? We just taught you this. Look at the sheet. If you don't, if they don't have syntax, they don't have what, Sydney? Yes, they don't have rules for their language. It's kind of like poop. Mm -hmm. That's in my head. That's what happens when Toby has to poop. <laughs> He's just like, oh, ball, poop! <laughs> and then he goes and finds a place to poop. And then, like, he's just running around the house, and he's like, food! And then he's like, goes running and gets food. I feel like that's how he thinks, because it's very sporadic. There's really no planning. There's no consistency. My man just kind of runs around and does whatever he wants. Kanzi is on your folk uh, study guide. Yes, it is cut off. Which box is it? I'm going to study guide. I know, but is it not a person? No? It's a monkey. Oh. It's a monkey. What do you mean? It's like all blacked out. Maybe his sunglasses on. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. It kind of looks like he is, though, doesn't it? I'm just old school photography. Yeah, it's just an old yeah. photo. It's probably like the 70s. <laughs> oh my God. What? She's like, what are you doing? You're like writing it. Yeah, write it down. So Kanzi is going is a monkey. He learns about 150 expressions, thoughts. He points to stuff, and he can kind of connect thoughts to a degree. But there's no sentence structure. There's no language structure. The man just kind of points at things and goes, "Food, love, puppy." I don't know if he says puppy. In my head, he says puppy. Are you okay? Do you need to go and get some water, my darling? No, we're good. <laughs> As he kills over and dies. So, Kanzi is a monkey who learns some expressions and stuff like that. It's important that you do understand that um, they're not, 
like stringing together sentences in a cohesive manner. They're not learning things beyond basic things like a little kid would know. Um, oh, and they're not speaking. Someone was like, well, do they say hello? <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't say hello. Why don't they say hello? Yes! We are connecting content. We are connecting content. Woo! <laughs> that was so mean. No, because you're like, because like this is why cats can't talk. I'm like, damn, I wish my cat could talk. I wish my cat could talk. It's like, it's like, man, I love my cat. I was so high, and then you made me so sad. Anyway. I actually got into an argument the other day with my brother. About cat speaking? No, because he tried to tell me about my dog could speak if she tried. And I was like, no, no, no. no. If he tried. <laughs> if he really tried and believed in himself, he could do it. So, when we talk about animals, please understand that they're not speaking. Someone was like, so did they say, I want food? No, no, no. There's some monkeys who can do basic sign language. I don't know what this is. This is an actual sign language, but like... It looks yes. really cool. Thank you. Thank you. No one. Oh, uh, when real people do it. Oh. A dog. A dog? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said the dog. The dog is silent. I was like, dog. That's funny. So, if you want to be thinking better, hi. Neither of you are getting done with you two. Thank you. You've gotten everything done? Have you started copying all your stuff into your study guide? Yes. Okay. On your study guide? How's that linguistic relativity theory going on your study guide? So, when we're talking about mental activity, you could play memory games. So, if you're going to like a little kid birthday party and you're like, ah, I don't know what to get them, you should get them like the little card game memory. Did you ever have that game where like on one side's like a like a fish, and then they have like all different stuff and you spread them all out and you pat like you have to find the like, yeah, it's a great game to improve memory. Dude, you gotta figure this out on your own, filling in your box. Yes, I know, but on your own without getting Alex involved because she was doing some things. Yes, I know, which just goes back to the previous conversation of you need to be able to do it on your own. Yes? Perfect. Goodbye. Have a good weekend. Um, the dog is, uh, what are you doing? Hi. Mom, I didn't know. So, we'll put on some music. So, come on over here. So, I saw you yesterday. And you ran out of here. Is everything okay? Starting in my home. Reaching the fever pictures, bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see the Go ahead and stop me, and I'll let you down. See, I'm the every piece of you. Cheating a fever, but it's bringing me out the dark. The scar.